Welcome to this little tutorial on camcorder single camera production and I have in front of me two Sony VX2000 cameras and one of them we just bought and one of them we've had for four or five years. At the bottom of the cameras we have these plates which we'll get into later. They will help you mount them on the tripod. Do not take these plates off for any reason. That's what I say to you guys out there. Um, the reason I'm doing this demonstration here in the studio where we have two cameras or three cameras is that we can get real close in a way that I can't show you guys in person when there's like 20 or 30 of you surrounding me. So here we have two sides to the camera. We're going to turn it to one side and show you the controls that are on this side. So on this side you have your viewfinder and your viewfinder will enable you to look obviously at the image that you're shooting and we're going to close that now just so I can show you the rest of the controls. Right here we have our camera filter. Now the camera filter is designed for when you're outdoors and it's bright and sunny you want to put your filter to one or if it's really bright and sunny you put your filter to two. When you're indoors you leave your filter off. So that's your filter switch right there. Next we have our focus switch we are now in autofocus and for now that's good enough. Later on when we get into more specialized stuff I'll have you probably always be in manual so that you can adjust your shots but we'll get into that a little bit later on. We have infinity. Now infinity you can't really see into infinity folks but you probably won't use that switch but at some other point we'll demonstrate what infinity is. That's infinity. And you see the switch doesn't let you stay in infinity. But for all intents and purposes you'll be using either manual or right now auto. Just stay in auto and you, you can't really go wrong at this point. But again when we get into specialized video you'll be getting into that. Okay? Now on the bottom of that you have a push auto switch. Just ignore that right now that will make everything automatic. You don't want to really want to do that for all the controls. So just for right now, for focus, stay in autofocus. On the other side of the camera are some more important things. If you open up this little rubber attachment, this is your patch bay. Now your patch bay, we have three RCA attachments, jacks. So you can send video and audio out of those or take video and audio in and put a signal through the camera. So if I attach, for example, uh, RCA cord to my video yellow jack here, I will go out to a monitor so that you guys can see what I'm shooting. Okay, and the same thing for audio. Now on the bottom, which will come into play later, is what we call a firewire connector. This will enable your camera to attach to a computer or a computer's hard drive and you can capture video directly from the camera with your login capture switch on Final Cut Pro. That will enable you to get video into your camera. Now on this, we're going to cover this up again. Uh, up at the top you have S-Video. Don't worry about S-Video. It's sort of an outmoded thing, well the way we're using it anyway. S-Video you're not going to need to, to worry about. That's S-Video. So just worry about your audio and video jack. So we're going to close up this right now because we don't need it. Now when you're on location taping, we're going to open up this one. And you can see here we have two other jacks. Ignore the bottom one. That's kind of a remote control device. On the top, very important is your headphone jack. You always want to use your headphones when you're recording to make sure that the camera itself is receiving an audio signal. Okay, now, where do you plug the microphone into? We're going to close up this. On the top of the camera, if we zoom out a little bit, we have our built-in microphone. If you want to override that microphone, you open up this little flap and you see a microphone mini jack and we're going to put this cord into it. This cord, this is an XLR to mini jack. On this side is an XLR cord. 
and on this side is a mini. We're going to plug the mini into the jack right here. Now when we do that, if we don't have a microphone attached to this, what you've done is you've overridden the, the, you've overridden the built-in mic. When you override the built-in mic with any jack that's plugged into it, there's no sound. So if you want to record complete silence, all you have to do is plug up that jack. Now, the microphone that we'll be using will attach to this XLR cord, and this is an omnidirectional stick mic. This is a standard microphone that's omnidirectional, which means the signal goes in a 360 degree fashion. So if I am, if you could put camera three on, thank you. If I am doing an interview with myself, obviously it's gonna get me. If the person in front of me talks, it'll still pick them up a little bit weaker, but basically you can get the audio signal in a 360 degree circle, okay? The microphone that you will be using, however, in the documentary style interview is the microphone that I have on now. It's a lavalier mic, which would plug into this as well. And for the documentary style interview, you'd be, you'd be just hearing me and not the interviewer, or hearing the interviewee and not the interviewer. We've got the back of our camera, as you can see, the battery these Sony cameras can use up to 15 hours of time. This probably uses about eight or 10. And on the side, you have these controls here, which I'm gonna attempt to demonstrate. The most important thing I want you guys to remember is this, about this side. This switch here, if I switch this switch up in the up position, I am locking all of my controls I will have no manual control at all on any part of the camera, including the focus if I press that button. All right, so you want to leave that button alone. You want to, if you want control over your iris or anything like that, make sure that this button on the camera is in the middle. This is your main power control for the camera. As we zoom in on this side, if we're in the up position, we will be able to play a video from our tape on the camera. If we're in the middle position, we are in off, power's off, that's it. If we are in camera position, then the camera will be able to shoot. You'll see there's the image. In camera, you're actually shooting video. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. You see my arm there. And now, the last control, which you probably won't be using is if I put it down too far to memory. This camera has the ability, which was very innovative in its day, but kind of commonplace now, you can take still pictures with this camera. And we have a memory stick, which I took out, which goes right here. I put the camera in VCR position or playback position, and all of the controls that would be on a mini DV player or a recorder or a VHS player are here. Stop, rewind, pause, play, fast forward, and stuff like that. So I'm going to put the tape into the camera now and show you how that's done. If I press the eject button here, you hear this little, those little beeps. And there's already a tape in there from what I was doing before. Bad idea to keep a tape in the camera when you're storing it because not only can anybody just take your tape and record over it and you can lose your tape but it's not too good for the camera as well and the tape will get a little bit loose so we're going to put this tape in the way to load this camera is notice the direction that I'm putting it in I don't put it in this way I don't put it in this way I put it face down so that you can read your label load it in, and then push the inner door in, like that. And then, here's what people get wrong. They say, oh, gee, I can't close the camcorder. What's wrong? Well, it's because they're not pressing. I just did that because of that. Pressing this button will lock it. This button, this right here. Now, you hear that snap? 
it lock right in. So now my tape is loaded. And if there's any question where you are on the tape, you want to press rewind, you should be using new tapes because old tapes will not capture well in the computer when you use Log and Capture and Final Cut. Okay? And that's how you load a tape. Those are some of the controls on the camera. That's just a little basic stuff. And I'll tell you more of that in person. On our next segment, we're going to be showing how to put the camera on the tripod.